Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio and there was Peg's drawing of me on this package. Um, I'm showing you the things that Peg Robinson sent me this month. This is our Shimmery Art collaboration that's going on for four months. This is the second month and we are doing canvases. So uh, be sure to check out the links to the videos of my friends below. We all sent each other a package of shimmery things and then each month we'll be using a different person's package to make a project. So I'm going through all this great stuff that Peg sent me. She's got just, she just got me loaded up with stuff here. <laughs> and um, kind of sorting them out, figuring out what I might want to use. And the, that stuff is netting by the way. The most interesting, the, the thing that spoke to me the most was this piece of scrapbook paper that had shimmery circles on it and purples and turquoises, which are my favorite colors. And I decided to use that and then I picked some other things that went with it. Um, everything that was red and green and gold I put back in the package and then I'm keeping the silver things and anything that else that I thought would match. Silvers, blues, purples. So I'm using a 12 by 12 canvas and um, it's already pre gessoed and everything and I start out by putting the scrapbooking paper on as a background for this for kind of a sky looking situation uh, snowy sky I guess um, I'm using deco art glitter uh, deco page medium it's called deco page and it's got glitter in it and so since this is shimmery art I'm not going to go with something matte like I normally would. Also, if I used a matte medium, what would happen, people? It would turn everything that's shimmery in this package matte because that's its purpose, is to make things matte. So no matte medium today. We're not doing anything matte. We're using gloss or glitter. <clears throat> so I'm just tearing up the paper but keeping the pieces in the same order, kind of giving it a, um, a cracked ice look. This helps me get it down more smoothly. If I tried to apply that entire piece to the background canvas, it would just be all bumpy. And it was like still didn't get it completely smooth, but good enough. Then um, I left an area at the bottom that's going to be the snowy bank. So I just left that white and didn't put any more paper on it. And now I'm, of course, drawing my picture. I decided because of the colors and the shimmeriness that um, I was going to make a snowman. So I'm drawing a little snowman and then the snowman looks kind of lonely by itself. So I decided to draw some kids playing in the snow and you know they got their outfits on to keep them all warm. They've got their hats and mittens and you know the whole thing. Uh, boots and gloves and jackets to keep them warm. Scarves, whatever. And they're playing in the snow <clears throat> and building the snowman. I think that probably these children are girls <laughs> because I end up making their clothes very uh, girly so they're probably girls you can't really tell because they're in such heavy clothing one of them standing up patting down the snow on the snowman and the other one's rolling another ball I don't know what she's planning on doing with it because they didn't really need another one but you know gotta have some action shots <laughs> And then I decided uh, where there's kids, there's a dog. So I end up drawing in a little dog who's looking on as well. Also, it just kind of added balance. <clears throat> of course, when I make a composition, I don't like to make everything exactly in the center. Um, I need it to be visually interesting. And so having everything exactly centered doesn't work for me. So I made the snowman a little bit to the right, but then on the left there was more room over there that needed something. And that's when I decided to draw the dog to accompany the children. The dog's not wearing an outfit. I probably should have put him in a snowsuit. <laughs> that would have been cute. But he's got his fur on, so it's all good. Then just to fill out the composition I added, I, I varied the, um, the slope of the ground and added a few snow covered trees to make it um, flow a little bit better. Got the kind of curvy 
lines, and then I had to transfer those lines onto my um, collaged background because it's a little bit different of a, of a horizon line than I had on there when I left the paper off. So now I have some uh, light molding paste from Golden. This is a textural medium and I'm using a metal palette knife to spread it around onto my snow and then I have this um, moon pearl embossing powder and I'm sprinkling that while the medium is still wet and sprinkling it around on that snowy area and then I am using a heat tool to activate the to dry everything and activate the embossing powder. I also thought that the snow looked too pristine because the kids would be walking in it. So I used my the tip of my finger to make some little footprints as well. So next I need to uh, start in on my collaging. I'm going to be doing paper piecing for all my figures. And you won't see all of it. This, um, this piece took four hours. And that's not even including the overnight dry, drying time, which I absolutely hate drying time. That's just evil. It's just evil. <laughs> but I did leave it overnight, and so that it actually took me two days. So the back of this uh, piece of um, scrapbooking paper is shimmery, pearly shimmery on the back as well. And so I decided to make my snowman out of that. But I couldn't cut it in one big piece because I'd already used most of the paper. <clears throat> so I'm making it in three sections, which is how a snowman would be made anyway, so it's not a big deal. And then attaching those three pieces to my canvas, um, the head, the medium, and the, the middle, and then the, uh, the bottom of the snowman. And I'm using Prima Art Basics 3D Gloss Gel. <clears throat> I attach most of this stuff with that it is glossy so it doesn't ruin the shimmeriness of any of the of the papers that I'm using and also it's heavy and I'm I'm making this um, as you'll see at the end very textural I end up using glass bead gel which is bumpy and um, you know you've got the, the molding paste at the bottom and the netting and everything so using the 3d gloss gel gives me a thicker something that will help everything stick down even when it's bumpy and you can kind of fill in the holes and the gaps with it and then it, it starts out looking white but then it dries clear since I put so much mediums on here that's why I had so much drying time <laughs> crazy amount of drying time so I'm attaching all my snowman pieces I did make myself some guidelines there um, where the child is going to be overlapping and also where the hat overlaps at the top, trying to keep everything very true to my drawing, which I draw on deli paper, by the way. I don't think I said that. That is the quick wrap 12 by 12 sandwich wrap, which has now become my favorite deli paper. So now I'm putting on the glass bead gel. This is a medium that uh, a few companies sell, and it's just got little glass beads in it that become very textural and also very shimmery <clears throat> dang my throat is driving me crazy so um, I did cut out a lot of that at this point and then now I'm adding my trees this is some netting that Peg sent I don't know where she got this stuff but it's covered with glitter and it's silver glitter glued to it tool I guess it would be tool not netting because it's very fine weave netting um, got glitter everywhere <laughs> all over me, all over my floor, all over my desk, but it was fun to use. I put down the 3D gloss gel first and then I put the netting over the top and then I just keep adding more and more layers of it to make it look more dimensional. I wasn't sure that one layer would be enough so I did pile on the layers and I did that on the other side as well. Then my camera shut off, I don't know why, but I used some of the the um, yarn uh, fibers that she sent me a lot of like really nice pretty fibers and I cut pieces of the fiber and 
made the scarf out of that on the snowman using again the 3D gloss gel to stick it down. So I put the 3D gloss gel and then just kept adding pieces of fiber until I was satisfied. This holographic sticker paper was in the pack that paid that Peg sent me and I used a die cutting machine to cut out snowflakes out of it. Then I was trying to decide how to attach them. They're stickers but I knew that I wanted to seal them somehow but I wasn't sure exactly. I didn't want to put a medium over the top that was going to completely dull down the holographic stuff. So I ended up using the glitter decoupage and it worked fine. It didn't completely dull it. So now I'm starting to do my paper piecing and so I'm going to do the hat on this very very glittery periwinkle colored paper. So the way that I do this is I take some this is decoupage and cut out my little pieces roughly and stick them down with the graphite side down and then that gives me lines that don't move. If I try to just clip the pieces together, my patterns, uh, and try to cut, I never get a true um, fussy cut on the pieces. So this is the way that I do it. However, I did figure out that doing it on dark paper doesn't work because I couldn't see the lines. So I ended up having to improvise. But for the lighter color papers, it works great because you can still see the graphite through the deli paper that's been glued on, it doesn't move and it helps you to be able to fussy cut out all your little pieces. I do um, cut, like leave some overlap on some of the pieces so that I can glue them together before I put them on the canvas. Um, I make the whole figure glued together before I stick it onto the canvas. So um, you saw me the little blue piece in between, I cut it larger and then I was able to stick the hat top and the hat bottom to it. So I'm doing the same thing with my standing up girl. I've got the periwinkle or purple colored shimmery paper, the turquoise colored shimmery paper, and then some just different scraps of regular cardstock figuring that I can make them shimmery by using a medium over the top. And I've got uh, skin colored cardstock, blue cardstock, kind of a cobalt blue, um, and even I think, maybe that's all I used, just don't, those two. Oh yeah, there was a printed paper, and you can't really see it there, but the girl's coat is made out of a kind of a light turquoise printed paper that it has a pearly shimmery finish that Peg had. So once I cut them out, then I start adding shading using my pit pins. Uh, these are permanent India ink pins that are from Faber-Castell pit artist pins. So I add in my shading in the color similar to the, the similar but slightly darker than the color of the paper. <clears throat> and then I do <clears throat> end up adding uh, black lines as well with a Posca pin. So this is when I figured out that the blue was too dark and I couldn't really see the lines that to cut out so I start kind of improvising. The mitten I could do by hand. Uh, I ended up drawing the little boots and cutting them out. Um, I'm just using my graphite pencil because it's easy to erase it if I don't need the lines anymore and it's shiny, it's it's reflective, so I can see it on the darker paper. So that works fine. So there's the little boots. Here's where I'm adding in some black uh, illustration lines, kind of sketchy illustration lines. I decided her mitten was too big there. <laughs> Trimming it down. So this is my fine tip Posca pen. I could have used uh, the black from my pit pin set, although it is a brush pin and I wanted a finer tip than that. I could have used my other illustration pins. So at this point I've cut out quite a lot because it's just basically the same thing. I did the same thing for the second figure and then I'm buttering the back of it like a piece of bread with my 3D gloss gel to attach it 
to the canvas and then tucking it down with the metal spatula and adding in extra gloss gel where there's a little gap. When I put on the bead medium, the glass bead medium, I tried to leave the areas clear. It really looks like snow. It really does. I tried to leave the areas clear where the figures were, but I wasn't exactly perfect, so that made it bumpy. And so then when I was putting the figures down, I, that's why I really needed the 3D gloss gel. So the little dog, same uh, procedure here, except for I'm not going to paper piece it. I just put it on some white cardstock, and then I'm using the pit pins to color in the details of the dog. I didn't um, piece out his little spots and stuff like that. I just figured it was small, and I could just do it with pins. So using, starting out with kind of a medium brown um, pen, then I think I'd go around and do the black lines next. It's a domesticated dog. It's not a wild dog, so it had to have a collar. <laughs> then the Posca pin with the black lines. And then I will go in with a deeper brown to add more uh, visual interest and dimension to the spots of it, brown. And then finish up with a white Posca pin for highlights. And then I'm going to give it a good dry before I put it on. So uh, then I get distracted and I add some pattern to the little hat. Um, I put actual tiny pom-pom balls on the tops of the two hats and I eventually I did put some glitter on them, uh, glitter glue on them. But I get distracted and decide that the it's time to make the snowman's face. So I used orange cardstock for the carrot and black cardstock for the eyes. And um, those, all those little holographic things at the bottom that you see, I didn't show putting them on, but they're, they're from the die cut from the inside of one of the snowflakes. It had all these little uh, leaf shaped pieces that I used just to continue that holographic paper to the bottom of the canvas. Now this bag is a bag full of sequin type things that Peg sent in her package and I'm using the silver stars all over the trees because I think they're cool looking. <laughs> and then there's these little square sequins and I pick out the navy blue ones that were in there to make the buttons um, on the front of the snowman. And then for the pieces of coal or whatever that the mouth is um, on the snowman, I went and got some 11-0 seed beads that I have from making beaded jewelry type stuff. So what I'm gluing all these things on with is the Mod Podge version of uh, Crystal Effects or uh, I can't remember what the Ranger brand is, but it, it's, say it's like a dimensional clear glue type stuff. And I'm using that to glue down all these little pieces. So <clears throat> little beads, you know, all my little paper pieces, the sequins, the stars, all of it are glued down with that. Works pretty good because it has a fine tip, so pretty easy to glue things down. And I'm probably just about completed here. Uh, what else did I do? There's one hole at the top that I added a half a snowflake um, because it was bothering me. It didn't look quite balanced. Oh yes, I do add some uh, trim, some silver trim to the hat. Uh, adding more shimmer. Can't have enough. <laughs> and I do the glitter glue and um, yeah, some pearly glue, I think. Just adding little details. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to uh, like, comment, subscribe, share. Those things really help me. Also, down below is linked everyone else's, the other three, Ina, um, Peg, and Eva's videos of Shimmery Art. And if you want to, you can check out our Facebook group called Shimmery Art if you'd like to share some of your own. And I believe that's it for me. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.